Hello guys, how are you doing? Welcome to Tech with Viresh. And today I'm starting with a new, seri new series where we'll take a deep dive into Apache Spark, uh, different operations, functionalities, how it is done, and how under the hood Spark as a system operates. Uh, so, so today in this particular video, we'll talk about uh, how uh, the joints are performed by Spark and primarily there are three type of joints which we're going to talk about we have shuffle joints sort joints and broadcast joints uh, broadcast joints i know everybody would be aware of uh, it, it, it's a famous uh, one out of three so let's see how it goes so let's start so guys if we talk about uh, how spark does join the different tables uh, there can be primarily two scenarios you have a big table uh, getting joined with a smaller table or you have a big table uh, getting joined with another big table and obviously these are two highlighted scenarios but uh, there are a lot of things in between so scenario number three as we say is everything which comes at we comes in between these two scenarios right so first one so to talk about the the infamous one the broadcast has joined the best of the lot from the sense that there would be no shuffling at all because in broadcast join, uh, based on the configurations, by default is 10 MB. If your one of the tables happens to be less than 10 MB, then that can be broadcasted across all the nodes in the cluster. And in that way, your join would become a local lookup on that local nodes, right, in the cluster. So there would not be any sort of shuffling, so to speak. Um, so best of the lot. So primarily there are two phases in the broadcast. One is, as we have said, the smaller of the two tables would be broadcasted across the executors in the cluster, uh, specifically where the larger table is located. And then in a phase two, we will do a typical classic hash join, uh, which is performed uh, by partition on the individual executors. Uh, and another highlight, as I've already told you about, there is no shoveling involved because um, data is locally available for that join to happen, right? Uh, this is for, uh, this is a default configuration, which uh, you can set in terms of uh, sending the threshold size. By default, it's 10 MB. If you do it minus one, so the Spark will disable broadcast join unless and until you explicitly get a hint that you explicitly mention that that particular join needs to happen as broadcast. Uh, Spark will not do it if in case it's minus one. The next one in the lot we're talking about is the shuffle hash join. Um, shuffle hash join uh, again has two phases. It's absolutely different how broadcast join works. Uh, in the first phase, the data from the joining tables are partitioned based on the joining key. So under the hood, uh, when it will try to repartition the data from the two tables based on the joining key, a shuffle will happen. Uh, this will move the data across the partitions. Uh, the idea is pretty simple here. Now we're trying to do, trying to join two columns, uh, sorry, two tables A and B. And uh, what we are essentially trying to do is, for the joining column, we're doing a shuffling of the partitions so that the partitions with the same key from the two tables can be co-located on the same nodes you know, so that it will reduce the lookup time and make our join faster altogether if they can be on the same partition you know uh, so for instance I have table A and then I have table B suppose I have a key one here and suppose I have a key one here so based on the default partitioning, how it has been happened, how you read the files and stuff, they may be on different partitions, right? But when I know I'm trying to join these two keys, and if I do a repartition based on this key now, then the new partition, those would be created as the keys are same, both will lie into the same partition. If you see, they'll both lie in the same partition. So this is my partition P, and this is the whole idea of uh, shuffle phase uh, as part of the shuffle join. And second one, obviously, is the classic hash join, where we'll create the hash tables for the build side. Build side is of the hash join uh, is 
the data side or the table side which is smaller of the two based on eventually based on the filtering and everything not the initial size but the data which is going for the join if that uh, data is smaller out of the two that will become uh, the build side and that data will form the hash tables where the probe side will do a lookup and that's how the join classic hash join is performed right so the idea here of the shuffle join is to get the to get the data partition on the joining key and get it into the same partition as far as it's possible right okay that's a let's see what would be the issue this, this sounds great that you if partition on a joining key and they're locally co-located in the same partition now that will become your narrow transformation uh, no further shuffling or anything of that sort is required and should be quick there are certain issues one is when shuffle join uh, happens it breaks uh, you know uh, one big table uh, into uh, one big join of two tables into smaller chunks so that a repartition is created and that results in shuffling and obviously shuffling is in uh, expensive operations uh, it's, it's a very network intensive as well so it takes a lot of bandwidth and uh, another problem is uh, the way we create uh, the hash tables from the build side comparatively smaller table that that creation of hash table is also memory bound and it takes a lot of memory so this is not I mean shuffle join would not work in a scenario where the two sides cannot fit into the memory that will result in a lot of spills which will split the hash table creation as well and uh, increase the overall size or time taken by the shuffle join but there are certain scenarios where shuffle join would be very much useful one is you know uh, any partition of the build side could fit in the memory. Build side is the smaller of the two tables in a very simple term, which is used to form the hash table for the lookup from the other side. If that can fit into the memory, it's, it's shuffle joint certainly would perform better. And uh, that's the whole idea of it. If the cost to build the hash table from the build side, and that will only happen if build size is uh, small enough to fit into the available memory under the hood then uh, it'll be far it will be far uh, faster if they get fit into the memory to create a hash table rather than performing the sorting of of the larger table which is what happens in the sort join which we'll see in the next slide so sort join but the main thing you will have to note it is to for the shuffle join to happen um, we'll have to make the preferred sort join mergers false because that is the preferred and the default choice of the joins. Um, the quick note, the cost to build a hash table is obviously less than sorting the data. If, if, if the data amount is huge, uh, say even say on the prob probe side, uh, you have a huge data because so sorting happens on both the sides, then it will take more time compared to building the hash table of the smaller table data uh, which can fit into the memory so that obviously would be faster uh, but how sort join is implemented that is the preferred choice in this part and we'll see why so let's move ahead the sort join sort join is a default uh, join strategy we've seen that property uh, to for shuffle join to come into effect we'll have to make it false and also uh, we'll have to make that uh, broadcast join as minus one because otherwise it may result into broadcast join uh, but the highlight of the sort merge join is if your matching join keys are sortable that is the first condition your keys on which you're trying to do the join should be sortable and uh, they should not be eligible for broadcast join unless or until you explicitly made it minus one and you stopped it the, the greatest point of sort merge is it is a very, very scalable approach and performs then uh, better than any other join. And the reason uh, for this is it is based on the map reduce paradigm. It, it, it has a lot of its traits from the map reduce program. 
What makes it scalable is it can split the data to the disk and doesn't require the entire data to fit inside the memory. That's the idea of you know memory. Uh, map reduce paradigm. You may have a little bit of I overheads, but when the volume of the data is very huge, this strategy works the best. Now the sort merge has three phases. One is the shuffle phase, uh, where the tables and uh, we essentially talk about that this join is is of scenario number two, where one huge big table is getting joined with another huge table. So tables are parti partitioned on the join keys, so that uh, you know uniform distribution can of, of data can happen across the nodes in the cluster. Then comes the sort phase. So sort phase uh, will try to sort the data within each partition uh, parallelly. And then comes the merge phase, which you can relate with the reduce phase of the map reduce, where it will join the two sorted partition data sets that we have. And uh, this is done by iterating over the elements. And then we'll try to find out the rows from both the side where the joining key is matching. And as the data in within the partition is already sorted, so this iteration becomes very much, very much faster. So that's how the sort merge join happens behind the scene. So we've talked about uh, three joins and a couple of things to note down is the idle performance of sort merge join is happens. Uh, again, it, it follows the same concept. If your uh, data from the two side can be co-located in the same partition, that's the idle scenario and works best. Uh, because for a simple reason, it doesn't result in any sort of shuffling. If you see, there would not be any sort of shuffling if the data is already co-located in the same partition. For the two joining keys, for the joining keys we are talking about. Um, another important thing for sort merge to perform optimally is that data should be evenly distributed. Obviously, if there would be a scenario is Q, uh, to sort the data say within a partition, which is say a heavy partition or skewed partition, will eat away a lot of the time and result in the overall uh, performance lag. Um, another thing which where sort merge join should perform and is an ideal choice is uh, the number of keys are unique enough, uh, which makes it a good partition key for the even distribution of data across the cluster, which obviously will result in maximum parallelism and the distribution would also result in very evenly distributed partition data sets. Well, now we have talked about three uh, joins that work under the hood for Spark, uh, apart from the Cartesians and uh, uh, Cartesian joins we, ha we haven't talked about, which is a worst case scenario, but these are the three highlighted joins which happens under the hood in Spark. First one is the broadcast join. Second one is the shuffle join that we discussed. Third one is the sort merge join, which is the default. And the key takeaways from this discussion is sort is the default and it works well in most of scenarios. Uh, get it traits from the map reduce paradigm. Um, unless until you're confident for cases where shuffle join would perform better, as we discussed the case where the build side, the, the small table of, of the two, uh, can fit into the memory. Therein, uh, Shuffle join would probably perform better than the sort join, but very specific. You'll have to use size estimators and get a size and get some stats before you go ahead with that. Uh, however, uh, the ideal scenario is if we can use broadcast join uh, if it is possible. So the idea is try to use broadcast joins wherever it is possible. And also before you try to send any data set for joins further, do all your fil filters and uh, stuff so that all the reduction of data happens before that data set even goes for the join. So as you know, joins are heavier operations. Sending the limited data set to the joins will always result in a better performance. Uh, joins without unique keys or no keys can be very, very expensive because they'll result in Cartesian or cross joints and idly should be avoided. So guys, that's it in this videos about uh, the joints in the Spark world. Thanks for listening. 
have a great day ahead and do subscribe to my channel good day bye bye